Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Philosophia Floating World. But before I begin, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goofs, you know what they are. And of course, I'm not Rado, I'm Shay Parker. I'm helping Rado cover even more games. And today we're looking at Philosophia Floating World. So let's dive in to Feudal Japan. A slightly mythical Feudal Japan because there are some monsters that we might face. Um, but in this game, we are going to be wandering around Japan, maybe visiting some beautiful locations, uh, going to the market to buy items. We are going to be learning about Japanese philosophies and we are going to be fighting monsters. And we are doing all of this because we want to be the best that we can be. We're going to be a very well-rounded person with all of these different interests. Mainly, we are trying to earn the four Gambaru tokens. If you've watched anime, you've probably heard this word before, gambaru or gambate. It usually gets translated to something like, do your best, or we're rooting for you. Um, and it generally means uh, something similar. It's, you know, we're trying to achieve uh, our best uh, our best qualities. Uh, at least that's what it's meaning in this game. So there are four gambaru tokens, and then there is this secret location token. Each of us has been given a secret location, which we have placed on uh, the top left of our player board. And if the other player can find this, then they will achieve the secret location token. And then they only need to get two of the combo tokens. Um, so let's look at what we got. Uh, we've got our player board. And now these are slightly different. Um, you can play this game in a slightly asymmetrical way, uh, which is what I have chosen to do. Uh, I've got my player characters, who also have uh, variable player powers. It's something pretty simple, but You've got a starting bonus and a, an ability on the bottom. Um, the uh, two characters that I'm playing as are the Ona Bugesha um, and the Kabuki actor. Uh, Kabuki actor starts with a little bit more money, but the Ona Bugesha has, I think, a slightly stronger ability. So we're going to see how that plays out. Now, uh, we have also have on our player board a number of actions, and you can see that some of them are covered up. Uh, an interesting thing about this game is that when you achieve things, like if I get one of these Gambo tokens, it's going to then cover up one of my actions. Uh, so, uh, and then once these actions are covered up, they are no longer usable. So the more uh, the more you achieve, the harder it is to get better. Uh, but that's a problem for future Shay. Uh, for now, we've got a, an island full of possibilities. Uh, so I want to jump right in. Now, uh, we'll start with uh, our Kabuki actor on our left. Um, and uh, at the beginning of the game, it's actually a little bit simultaneous. In fact, most of this game is meant to be played simultaneously. There is a uh, turn-based variant, which is what I'm going to be using because I'm literally one person. And I can't have as much as I want to. I cannot have two simultaneous uh, thought processes going on. So the way that it works is you take... Uh, your deck of cards. You start off with a starting deck of cards. Um, they're the same for each uh, for each class, though the um, the artwork uh, tends to be different because they're really trying to, to show off this um, traditional ukiyo-e artwork. Um, if you want to take a look, there's all of the cards have uh, unique artwork, and they are all uh, traditional Japanese paintings. So uh, what I will do is uh, I draw six cards. I will then hand it to the other player. Uh, so right brain here is going to take the uh, six cards and I'm going to choose one of them to discard immediately. So I look through what do I think they are going to want the most. And as you can see, there's this great artwork, but what we're really looking at are the symbols on the bottom. Because um, these are things that you're going to collect and uh, actions that you're going to be able to take. So I think I want to get rid of something that I think is going to be valuable. I see this card here that gives them builders. And uh, I know that builders are pretty valuable, so I'm going to just take that and discard that for them. Let's see, I'll put it down here. And uh, of the remaining five cards, I'm going to take uh, all, each of them and I'm going to place them into two piles, one with three cards and one with two. So I see... Uh, so this is where I want to like make maybe make the... Um, the three pile filled with cards that are slightly less valuable. I see I have three cards here that don't have any collection. So I think I'm going to make this their three pile, and I'll make the two pile filled with some slightly better stuff. Hand those back to uh, the other player, and they are going to choose one of those piles to take. So I look at these cards, and I think, well, 
Uh, yeah, I probably don't want this one because I, I don't get much out of it from the collection. Uh, so I'm going to take the, the smaller two card pile and we'll get to what happens with that in just a moment. Now, uh, the uh, player on the right will also take six cards, hand them to the player on the left, and we'll do the same thing. So these uh, seem like they might be slightly better. Let's, uh, for now, let's just toss that card and then make uh, two piles. So there's a pretty good variety in the cards that we just drew, uh, but you know we want to make sure that uh, we try to, to to make it so that you know you're giving your opponent a tough choice. I think again, yeah, the builders can be pretty valuable. Um, so I'm going to make this two stack and this three stack, and we'll go over to right brain and I take a look and yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of stuff here, but I think I want the extra time. I'll tell you what time is good for in just a moment. So I'm going to take the uh, the two stack as well. So now that we've uh, done that, we collect. Uh, the various goodies that we get from these cards, basically anything in the green on the bottom left. So this one gives me a builder. Builders are going to be important for building both our uh, the three uh, Shinto shrines and the pagoda. Each of, uh, if I can build all three Shinto shrines, I get the Shinto Ganbodo token. If I can build the pagoda, I get the Buddhist Ganbodo token. So I want I want builders. I want to be able to build. Uh, so I'm getting that, and I get a time token. Uh, time is used for the actions that we have on our board, as well as building. Again, I think I think my strategy over here is going to be building uh, first, and then we'll go from there. So passing it back to the left player, taking their cards. They We start with, we get a coin and a time, so that's nice and easy. Just grab those resources and drop them on our player boards. And now, at the end of the collect uh, action, we are going to be uh, placing time on any other actions that we want to take. We are going to get actions based on the cards that we have just gotten, so I know that I'm going to be able to acquire uh, another season card and I'll be able to search locations, or I'll be able to reveal a location, which is going to help me towards finding my enemy's uh, secret location. But I might also want to do something else. Maybe I want to go to the shop. I've got a little bit of money so maybe I want to go to the shop. Uh, I can buy a shuriken. Weapons help me against fighting the uh, the monsters that come up. Or I can get one of these little cards that will give me a uh, one-time use ability. This guy will let me search once uh, in the game whenever I want to. So maybe I want to put something like that. I've got plenty of time, so I don't see why I shouldn't. Um, but these cost money. And I don't, I'm not flush with cash exactly. So I think I'm going to put a time token on wisdom and I can get some of these wisdom cards or one of the wisdom cards. And I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, going back to right, I think I'm gonna do something similar. I don't have a lot that I can really work with with these. I've got a movement action and also a reveal locations action. So I want to do something a little bit more. Uh, I. I don't have much money, so going to the shop is not, I think, uh, going to be useful for me. I and I can't build just yet because I don't have the, all of the required materials. But I think I will also go and get a wisdom card. So now that we've locked in our actions, we will move on to the uh, move on to the action phase. And this is another thing that would happen simultaneously. It's it's pretty easy to just go uh, everyone taking the actions that they want to take. The only issue is that occasionally you want to do the same action or you want to do an action that uh, counteracts something that someone else wants to do. And in uh, the simultaneous version, we would be able to uh, stop someone from doing something by using our influence. Whoever is higher on the influence track gets to determine how that works. But uh, because I'm doing a uh, turn by turn variant that won't uh, be able to happen quite as much. So we'll start with uh, our Kabuki actor on the left and I get to do an action. I've got uh, three possible actions. I can reveal uh, a location, I can grab one of these cards, or I can get some wisdom. Let's start by, let's just reveal a location. 
So I spend my reveal location card and I grab one of these location tiles. These are the same as the ones that might be one of our secret locations. So I take it and I reveal Fuji. So I'm gonna take it and put it on the, on the Fuji space on the board. And so now I know that if I wanna go searching from the enemy secret location, I don't need to look in Fuji. But also for playing that um, action, I get a coin. It's gonna be useful for me later. Passing over to right. I will, so I don't really need to move right now. I've got this move action, but I don't feel that I need to go anywhere at the moment. So I'm just gonna discard this card and get a coin from it. So I'm feeling a little cash poor. Bring it back. All right, I think now it's time to get some cards. I've got this uh, get cards action. So I'm gonna play that. And let's take a look at some of the location cards that we have available. Um, again, all of these are, are showcasing this uh, Ukiyo-e artwork, um, but this is also a deck building game. So uh, while we can look at these, the most important information is along the bottom here. Again, they uh, give you collect abilities as well as the actions that they let you perform. Some of these are landscapes, as you can see, they're kind of sideways. And if I can get one of these and place it, then I will then permanently have this action available to me. This one specifically being the burn action. But that's not always easy to do because of the uh, uh, I cut, you choose kind of nature of, of selecting your cards. So I'm looking at what I think will be most valuable for me, but there is something else that's important. Uh, on my player board, I have been given a discount. Basically, I get winter cards for one uh, coin cheaper. So if I wanna look at what down here is a winter card, then I'm going to see uh, which cards I'm gonna have a discount on. So I've got the view of Shiba Coast here, and this is uh, a winter card, it costs two. It gets me time and it allows me to burn a card, which is going to help thin my deck so that only, only the good things remain. Or I can go for this one. Uh, this will permanently let me acquire more cards, and that might be useful. My Kabuki actor ability lets me uh, hold more cards in my hand, so it might be good for me to try and get as many cards as I am able to. But for now, I think I'm gonna go for the, the time one because time is always a valuable resource. So normally it costs two, but because of my Kabuki actor ability, I can, own, I can pay just one for it. And I'll take this and put it in my discard pile and bring out a new one, another landscape. And uh, that's a shop action one. So Let's move over to right brain. And I think let's just do our reveal location action. So we grab one of these cards. It is uh, Sendai, that's where I came from. So that's where I am right now. I'm gonna put that on and I get a coin from it. Pass it back to left. Uh, so now we're out of cards on the left, but the only thing we have left to do is uh, try and attain some wisdom. We spend that time and we look at the wisdom board. Now we can see what's coming up, but Part of wisdom is patience, so you can only take the card that is on the right side. So I'm going to take this uh, Buddhism card, and I'll just put it uh, on, on top of my player board. I've got, I can hold uh, a maximum of four cards, and if I can uh, collect all four of the symbols, um, you see we've got Buddhism here, there's also the, uh, this is the Taoism symbol, there's Shinto, and then there's also a Confucianism symbol. If we can get all of those, then I can trade them in for the Chie Gambara token. Should be pretty good if I can get that. So, but it does depend a little bit on what is available here. So I've done that, passed over to right. Now I'm also going to get some wisdom, but I'm going to use my uh, Onobogeisha's special ability, which is that I can wipe this board for free before I choose one of these cards, or before I take the available card. Now, anyone, when they're taking this action, can spend time in order to wipe the board and reveal some new cards. Same with the shop and the location cards, but my ability lets me do it for free when I take the action. So I'm gonna do that because, yeah, there is a um, there is a Taoism card there, but I think, like I said, I wanted to build, so I'm looking for the Taoism and, sorry, uh, I'm looking for the Shinto and the uh, Buddhism uh, symbols. And that's what I have just found. I found a Buddhism symbol right here. So I snag it, put it in my tableau, and refresh the cards. 
And so now we are out of action, so we are going to move on to the next round. We are going to draw some more cards and do the whole thing again. So again, grab the six top six cards, hand them to our opponents, and we are going to uh, take one, discard one of the ones that we don't want our opponent to do. So I'm going to discard one of these uh, the cards that let them draw extra cards. Oh, I should be on right brain right now. And I'm looking at what else is available. I, I'm going to grab, let's see. Yeah, they've got a lot of money, but I bet they don't. They're not really looking for a lot more money right now. So I'm going to take these three cards that all give them money and um, put them in one stack and the two that give maybe more useful things onto the other stack. And now we're looking at what uh, Right Brain has. Um, now I think their, their first, their draw on the last round was a little bit better than this one. Um, I don't think, well, no, I don't think they're going to go to the shop, so I, I shouldn't need to get rid of that. Uh, I do think that they are going to need time and money. So I'm going to get rid of one of these money cards. And then the other one, yeah, I'm going to put in the two stack. And uh, the other one will be in the three stack. So I hand those over. And I'll look at the cards that I got. And I think of these three, I, I actually think I do want the three stack. I am going to get all that money. So I grab this. I've got three coins to collect. I am rich. Hopefully I'll be able to use that. I think I will. And for right brain, well, I'm gonna drop this two stack because in the three, I've got a card that lets me draw another card. So I have to do uh, a draw, those draw actions first. So I'm gonna take that. Now I don't have any more cards uh, available. So I'm gonna take what I have in my discard pile. Shuffle that up, and I'm going to draw one of the cards off of the deck. Well, it could have been better, I think. This is just going to get me an extra buy cards action. I have three of those. So that's... And I don't have a lot of money. So, okay. Maybe that wasn't the best uh, option, but I, I think I'll be okay. The other thing I get is an extra time token. So I'm going to grab that. And now we have to place uh, any time on the actions that we want to take. I think I do want to... Uh, do a little bit more wisdom. I think I, I, I'm going to need wisdom in order to keep building. So I want to do that. I also want to build because if I can do this quickly enough, then the then I can get this uh, Shinto Shrine and then I can build a shrine really quickly. So I'm going to put both of my time. Uh-oh. I put both of my time? Well, if I put both of my time, then I'm not going to be able to build. So how am I going to be able to build if I have spent both of my time? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm not going to spend both of my time. I'm just going to spend one. I'll build next round. So let's go to left. What are we What are we planning on here? I've got a lot of this, all this money. Uh, I do have a, a buy action. Ooh, but they left me with this festival marker. The festival is going to allow me to turn my money into time and vice versa. So. I feel pretty good about that. I've gotten the extra money that I need, and I think I'm gonna put one of my time onto the shop action. I think there's some things that I can pick up that'll be pretty useful. So let's move on to the action phase. Now we're gonna start with the uh, right brain this turn, uh, because it, go it passes uh, left to right, uh, or passes in clockwise order if you have more than two players, and you're doing the uh, turn by turn variant like I'm doing. So let's take some actions. I know that I want to uh, get that uh, wisdom. It's they're not packing wisdom, so I don't think that I don't actually have anything to worry about. But might as well grab it while it's here. So I'm going to grab this Shinto wisdom card, place it there, slide everything over. I could have replaced the other cards if I want to, uh, if I wanted to, but I don't have to. Ah, uh, now the next one is going to be pretty valuable. I hope I can get that because this guy has two symbols on the top: uh, Confucian and a Buddhist one. They don't. They aren't worth. It's not good for both. But whenever you're spending, you can choose one or the other. So pretty useful. Passing back to the left, we've got. Uh, well, we've got some things we can do. I did want to go to the, uh, the shops, but I definitely want to play the festival token. So I'm going to play that card, 
and drop the festival into my current location. And now at any point at, in any phase during my turn, I can exchange money for time and vice versa. So I've got a lot of money. I don't have a ton of time. So why not just grab turn two into two? That feels pretty good. Yeah, why not? Uh, and going back, uh, I've got a lot of buying card action. So I probably want to do something with that. But I know that there, I know that left brain is going to go to the shops, and I do have a shop action. So I think I want to get something, one of these cheap items before they do. Um, so I'm going to spend my shop action card. I'm just going to spend one coin because the cost is on the top here. Um, well, I can spend one coin for the search action. It's just an anytime you search action. I actually think it might be better to spend two coins on the shuriken. So uh, the weapons are used for fighting monsters. If you can, uh, if you can find the right weapons and have the right supplies, then the monsters are no sweat. But you don't know what you're going to find when you flip it. It's always some combination of uh, weapons, money, and time. And if you have what you need, then you succeed. But if you don't, then you don't. So let's flip it back. Well, they took the shuriken that I wanted. I was going to get that shuriken too. I have four money, so I could get the uh, the Yumi, which is the bow and arrow. I think I might do that. I Yeah, I'll spend my uh, time at the market. I will pay. Ooh, okay, so I could get what's out here right now, or I can spend one time, and I have plenty of time now, and I can wipe this board. And I, I'm going to do that because I hope that I'll get a cheaper weapon. So I'm going to wipe the board, just grab all these cards, put them on the bottom of the deck, and we'll see what we get. Yeah, there we go. That's a cheap weapon. Ooh, there's a lot of weapons for sale. Well, I can only buy one thing, so I'm going to spend my one coin on this shuriken. So now I've got that. Uh, all right, passing it back to the right. Well, that could have gone better. Ooh. But, and now I can't do this this turn because I don't have this action lined up. But I'm looking at this Shinto shrine. Now, this, if I have this, I can spend it as if I had a Shinto wisdom. And I need to use Shinto wisdom uh, to build my Shinto shrines. So, that's something for me to keep an eye on later. Now, what I've got, yeah, I've got all these buy actions. So let's take a look at what I got. I, I get a discount, so for my view of the whirlpools at Awa, I get a discount on spring cards. And I do see a couple of spring cards out here. I only have the one coin. So the only one I can actually afford is this one. But this guy gets me two builders. And those are going to be really useful for building, which is what I wanted to do. So I'm going to do that. I will spend that card. I'll spend a coin and grab this good building card. Wow, all these are really expensive. We'll see. We'll see if it becomes worth it to get the others. All right, back to me. I've got a move action, which I don't really want. I've got a, a buy cards action, which I think I could make some use of. I have the discount on winter items, and there's two of those right here. I'm going to grab this one because it costs one, so that means it's free for me. And if I can pull it off, it'll give me a permanent shop action. So buy that with my shop, with my location cards action. All right, and we're going to go pretty quickly for the last ones because I have no money, so I can't buy any car. Oh, there's a free one. I could buy this free one. I don't know if I want to inundate my deck. You know, it's a deck builder. I don't necessarily want to just fill things up. So I know I'm going to discard that one for a coin and pass it over. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. Discarding for a coin and going back to the right. Got one last one. I've got the one coin, so I, I could get this free one if I wanted to. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's fitting with my plan right now. So I think I'm just going to discard it for the coin. And now that is the end of the round. Let's go back. Uh, and so now we're going to do another round of the uh, drawing cards. Uh, I cut, you choose kind of thing. Um, so I think you're getting a pretty good idea of how this game is played, what the, the, uh, what the flow of it is. I want to move forward. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. Um, so let's say I have put out some of these shrines, these... Uh, 
Shinto shrines, when you put them down, you put them in the location you're in, which means I then need to move to a different location to put down more shrines. So let's say I've been able to build that up uh, pretty well. I've been spending my my shrine, my uh, Shinto cards to do that. Uh, once I put my last one out, let's say I'm at Edo, Edo, uh, that means that I get the Shinto Shrine Ganbaru token. But it also means that I now need to cover up one of these actions. Well, I've done a lot of building at this point, so I think I'm gonna cover up the build action because I'm only gonna need it one more time for the Pagoda and there are cards with build actions on them. So I think I'll be able to find that by the time I have the money and resources for that, I should be good to go. I should have been on right brain this entire time. That's okay, you get what I was going for. Now on left brain side, I think my idea here is let's fight monsters and maybe let's try and find the enemy's location. So I'm gonna be prioritizing these uh, turnover location tokens. So I would be spending a lot of them in Iwaki, get Kyoto, get Higo. So I, I put all of these out, which not only narrows down my search, but it also gets me money every time I do that. I use the money to pick up all of these weapons. Now I've got all three weapons. I have everything that I need. And so I know that I'll be able to fight some monsters. But as long as I have enough money and time, which again, I've been getting a lot of money from the uh, searching locations. You know, I've been... Uh, I've been at the party location for a while. It's got this festival. I love to party. I love to turn my money into time and my time into money. And so once I am, I feel loaded up, I can make my way to one of these battle locations and try and fight a monster. So I would turn over a monster card and I would look in the bottom to see if I have the required uh, token. So I've got the Yumi, the bow, and I've got two coins. So I would spend those and then I, and now I have uh, defeated this monster, which gets me the Bushido uh, token. And again, I have to cover up one of these spaces. And this one's a little bit harder to decide because I didn't spend an action to do this. Uh, I just I just did it. So each of these is still pretty useful, but I think that shop action is probably the least useful for me now because I have gone to the shop enough that I've got all of those weapons. And once you defeat a monster, uh, you don't need to defeat another one unless you want some style points, I guess. Uh, so we're going to keep going like that until one of us gets either four of the Gambara tokens or one of the uh, location tokens and two other Gambara tokens. And then whoever does that first is the winner. So I will see you over in the final thoughts. By uh, You can get to by hitting the link in the top right or the link in the show notes below. So I'll see you there in three, two, one. Bye-bye, folks.